In today's video, I'm gonna break down how I create crispy reels in DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna be going over my captions, exactly how I create these graphics that you're seeing on screen right now. And we're gonna be going, most importantly, over my export settings, which I've been getting so many comments about. And if you are new here, my name is Ryan, and I help other editors get saucy in DaVinci Resolve. And I actually have some of the most premium editing assets in the first link in the description, so you are gonna not wanna miss the sale I'm having right now. But without further ado, let's hop into today's video. Boom, guys, so we're in here in DaVinci Resolve. And now we start off with this crispy, um, we, we start off with this crispy glow. So we start off with a zoom out transition and then it zooms in just like this, okay? And then we have this crispy glow effect, okay? So some of you guys have been like dying to ask me how I create that crispy glow effect, but actually it's too in depth to show you guys in today's tutorial because that's a whole video itself. So I'm gonna leave a video up here that you guys can go ahead and watch to learn how to create that. But basically how we end up getting the real to look crispy all starts from the camera. So I'm using a Sony ZV-E1 and that camera right there is generating me such a crispy image. So it starts from the camera. Now, if you don't have a solid camera, then you have, then you are in luck because I have a couple of tips and tricks to level up your camera footage. Let's hop right in. But when I'm color grading this, right? So I come to the color page and this is my node tree. Let's say I restart all of this, okay? What I do is I come to my power grade and I grab my power grade. This is what my raw footage looks like. Okay, then I'm gonna come to my LUT and I, I have made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've made like seven LUTs that you guys can find within the all-in-one bundle. But anyways, you guys can also create your own LUTs by tweaking colors and stuff like that. And I basically slap this LUT I use in my studio right here and you can tell it's very overpowered. So what we do is we come to the balance and you can create your own node too, but you can come to this temperature and change the temperature of your skin tone. So you look at my skin tone, that's the before and the after of my skin tone and just by using the balance node. So now what we're gonna do is come to the LUT and then we already added that LUT. So all we have to do is come to this little key output right here and then just turn the LUT down. So that already right there, this is the before and after of my LUT, that's generating me a crispy image itself. Now, there's a few effects that you can add in post. So you can go ahead and search for film creator look and add in that look. And it's gonna look kind of whack. Now some on some footages, it's gonna look good just off rip. But we're gonna come up with the preset and do 35 mil. And we're gonna turn down the color and we're gonna turn down the film look. That way everything is all the same. So now what this did here is if we go ahead and turn this on and off, it's adding this film look that's just making it look so crispy and clean. So what I'm doing here is now I'm just gonna come here and turn down the grain. Um, and that's as simple as that. So if we turn this on and off, what it, what we, what it also added was bloom and utilization. I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's just what, how I say it. But anyways, that is how you create your crispy reels and that's how you get crispy reels. Now, another thing is B-roll. So B-roll is also huge too, okay? So we'll go over all of that stuff today. So we start off with a, an effect that kind of animates down just like that. So I can show you guys exactly how I recreate that. So come to the titles and grab a text plus and slap this on down right here. And we're gonna go to here, we're gonna search Apple Garmin. Um, that's just a text font. We're gonna do bold italic and size that sucker up like right here. Now, we already created that that shine text effect. So I actually made them as presets so I can come here, and this is Motion Text Pro by the way, if you guys are curious, but I can come here and just grab this title right here so I don't have to like keep remaking them. So I made these and you guys can also get them off of me in the link down below. But basically what I did was I copied this in here. Like I'm just gonna straight up delete all of these to show you how easy it is. Like all I did was copy and paste this in here. Um, so this is the effect right here. So we're gonna do this effect just like so. And you can't change the color right here. So you have to come to the fusion page um, and there's instructions on like how to um, change the color. But you come here and then we're just gonna change this color to like orange. That's the color I'm liking. Um, and then all we gotta do is move this like right here. We're gonna come and grab a text plus for the second part of the video. So bring this text plus in. And as I was saying, you can go ahead and just pull the drop down menu and do Apple Garmin. I just had to redo it because I deleted it on accident. But anyways, we're gonna do literally, so as I'm typing, typing this out, um, we're gonna pop this right here. And actually we want this under the actual like glow because it's gonna sit under it just like that. 
So that's like a premium feel right there. You know what I mean? Like that's giving it a premium feel. So we're gonna deactivate this and go into the Fusion page just with this literally. And we're gonna go ahead and shift, shift space for a transform node. And we're gonna come up about 0 0.58. And then we're gonna go approximately 15 to 20 frames, anywhere between there. And bring this back down to 0 0.5. And then go to the settings and toggle on your motion blur. And then you're gonna wanna open your spline tool right here. So we'll go to zoom to fit and then command A. And then we're just gonna go ahead and hit ease and out cubic. So now it comes down really crispy just like that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to the final thing right here. We're gonna hit shift space and add some blur. And we're gonna crank that blur up just like so. And we're gonna add this ellipse right on top of the blur. And then we're gonna put it right there. And then we're gonna crank that soft edge up just like so. So now we have that crispy blur text effect. Just like that with an animation. Or if you wanna save time, you can grab Motion Text Pro. And all I'd have to do is just drag this down like like hold on let me let me delete all these effects so you can really see what's going on here like that right there boom just like that so if that's if you want to save time you can go and cop that but i just showed you how you could do it but anyways we're going to swipe up and pull this as it fades in just like that so this effect literally and then we extend that and then we do wouldn't and then we explain exactly how, or if we just say what I'm saying as the timeline goes down. So I mean, this effect, effect literally, literally would, not would not get off my page. So et cetera, just like that. Okay, cool. So now that you guys got that down, um, we have to add what's called motion, which is actually really easy. So come to the effects page and grab what's called a, an adjustment clip and place this in front of your clip. And we're gonna go about a couple frames, make it about yay big, you know, we make it about that big. We could even make it a little shorter. We're gonna come into the Fusion page with this adjustment clip and see mine's 15 frames, so you're, you're good to go. But we're gonna use the same transform node and we're gonna zoom in just like right there and we could probably even go in a little more, but we're gonna hit a keyframe, we're gonna go to the very end and then go back to one. So I hit a keyframe on frame zero and I turn it back to normal on frame 15. And then we're gonna do the same method, so we're gonna hit Command A, which highlights both the points and then we're gonna go to ease and out cubic. So you can do it like this, just like that, okay? And then an extra trick is to come here and enable uh, dynamic zoom. So that way, when I turn these effects off, cause my computer's like blowing up right now, I mean, when it pulls out, it also slow zooms. So if I just take this away, I mean, you can see it slow zooms just from using dynamic zoom right here, dynamics, all you have to do is toggle that on. But then you pair it up with a zoom I mean, out, and then you pair it up with these and you put the effect above the page, the effect this effect would literally would not get off my page. Like it, it's, it's, it's a no brainer. It's so fire, bro. I, I love this effect so much. That is pretty much how I utilize captions in my video. Now I showed you guys how you could do that glow effect with that link above there. And then I showed you guys how you can make those caption animations yourself. And I also showed you guys within this small video time frame so far, how you could do a zoom out yourself and I also showed you how you can color grade your footage and get that crispy look. Now, guys, you take that exact thing that I just taught you and you run with it through the rest of the video, through the rest of the video, because you can reuse and recycle those animations and et cetera, what I just taught you. Maybe use different directions and different ways that you can go, right? But the main part is what we're talking about here is how to get crispy reels. So. Use the color grading mechanisms and techniques that I just taught you how to do, and I promise you, you will automatically have crispy, crispy, crispy reels. Like that grain right there was able to get my video that I posted yesterday already at 5K views, and I posted it yesterday. And keep in mind, guys, I don't have a big following. I have 2.4K on Instagram. So this video that I'm literally showing you guys that I edited in DaVinci Resolve right now, I'm showing you guys the video that I edited, is on IG and it already has 5K views in like, like 10 hours, which is pretty good metrics for Instagram. So now guys, the most important part that people have been asking me about is, Ryan, how in the world can I do export setting? All right, let's go. So you're gonna go to the export button and you're gonna name your file whatever you want to name it. So we're gonna name this crispy underscore real underscore V1, okay? Now, this is very important. What DaVinci is gonna automatically do is keep this as QuickTime. Now, you don't want QuickTime to be the factor. What you need to do is hit and make sure you're using MP4, okay? Make sure the code that you're using is H264. And what we're gonna do is for timeline resolutions, you're just gonna have it at an automatic 1080, 1920. And, and that is solely depending on 
what you're filming in. So this is obviously a short form content. So if you want to film long form content, go back to your thing, go back to the, go back to the edit page and hit shift nine and it's going to bring up this project settings right here. So if you want to go to timeline resolution, hit this drop down menu, you're going to have an option to do 2160 by 2160 ultra HD square. So if you're filming in square, then you would choose this. But if you're choosing a regular 1920 by 1920 or a 1080 by 1920, then what you're going to do is ultra HD and we're going to hit save. Okay. Now we're going to come back to the export settings and now you can see that it's on 2160 by 3840 and it's just going to automatically be there because that's in your timeline settings. So now that we have that crispy, like the highest resolution possible, and you can see that how crispy this whole thing is looking. And it also helps that the text effects and stuff like that are also crispy, but we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do crispy underscore real underscore V1. Now guys, I will admit, you're real for some reason how DaVinci Resolve works when you name the project. For some reason, they like it better when you add underscores and not spaces. Because sometimes spaces can corrupt your file and even make it more blurry. I'm not even joking. There's research on that done. So make sure it's just a small step. Just add underscores in between your wording and, and don't use spaces. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. MP4 and we're going to, for frame rate, we're going to just use the exact frame rate I use on my camera. So 23.976 per, which is my frame rate. Okay. And everything else I leave the same. I don't even touch the advanced settings. Just make sure you do those exact same things. Make sure you're on MP4 and your code is at H.264 and you will be good to go. Now, once you export, all you have to do is post the reel from your phone because that's a really, really big game changer that I've noticed is like when I post it from my phone, it's higher quality and the video ends up doing better. And when you're posting on IG, don't use hashtags. Hashtags do not work anymore. It doesn't matter what hashtags you use. Don't waste your time doing that. If I were you, I'd rather you put a fire description in the bottom of the, the reel because that's gonna give it more personalized details. So if you guys are struggling with reels, then drop a follow, drop a subscribe. My IG will be in the link in the bio. And also check out my time-saving editing packs. And if you like this video, then let me know down below. I'm looking to get feedback from you guys and, and what you guys wanna see from me moving forward. But wait, guys, thank you for watching this tutorial. And I am so blessed that you, if you stayed it to the end, bro, I am so blessed for you. You're the reason why I'm able to do this full time and, and, and I'm, I'm so beyond blessed. So thank you guys. And I hope you guys all have a blessed day because I'm having a good day. God is good. Praise God. Peace out guys.